What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're having a very blessed and wonderful day. Today's video topic will be us discussing what I feel is the biggest win that we've had recently for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, but at the same time, it's also somehow managed to become the newest issue in the Suicide Squad community for some apparent reason which is the offline mode edition for the game. So three days ago, right? Right after the latest trailer, No More Heroes came out, we received word that an offline mode will be coming to the game post-launch. I'll go ahead and put the official message up here on the screen so y'all can see it. In addition to our latest trailer, we also have some news to share. We're happy to confirm we are planning to add an offline story mode that will give players the option to experience the main campaign without an internet connection. And we're aiming to add this update in 2024 and we'll provide more details when it's available. Now, ever since February, right, with the state of play fiasco, one of the major topics of conversation surrounding the game was the always online aspect. You can only play the game if you were playing off an of internet connection. And as long as the server stayed up on the Rocksteady side, you will be able to access it. However, if they go off, the game is forever lost to the void. Now, people were not happy about this and for good reason, right? I, I understand. I, like, I completely understand. I personally didn't mind it more so because I'm blessed in a place. I'm, I'm, ble I'm blessed to be in a place where I can obtain decent Wi-Fi in order to avoid issues like that. But overall, I genuinely just didn't like the fact that it was a thing to begin with. I didn't like it in Diablo and I don't like it here in Suicide Squad because there are other people that are really not fortunate enough to have a what so decent to good internet connection a stable connection right because even if you do have an internet connection there are some people who based off the area that they live in or for other reasons it might not be strong enough to maintain a steady connection so they could be dropping in and out of every game simply just you know due to lack and issues now rocksteady after hearing the pleas from the community they've decided to add in an offline mode post-launch so we'll be able to keep the game that we paid for and it's also a way of keeping Kevin Conroy's final performance in the hands of the fans who love to support him during his lifetime tenure now the f here on the goddamn internet have somehow turned this into the new problem of the day this feature should have been in the game at launch is primarily what I keep seeing and before y'all come in my neck I agree that it should have been at it should have been here at launch or before a hundred percent the issue, see, here's my thing. After running through Twitter and Reddit, because those were the last places I checked before I like, you know, I started writing this out. This, what came to my attention, right? What I'm starting to realize is that it isn't the offline mode itself that people are having an issue with. It's more so people are finding it hard to see this as a win because they continuously stack this up to the other issues that they have, like the gameplay showcases not being that great, which is understandable because that's something that I have been saying for the longest. I have the utmost respect for the developers, but at the same time, you know, I'm honest enough to give my feedback and is that the gameplay showcases that we've been getting not, are necessarily not all that great. It feels like very, it feels like very limited, like there's a lot missing uh what are some of the other issues uh battle passes and the live service elements of course that's always going to be a topic of discussion all of the characters using guns pretty much the same issues that people have been regurgitating for the past year now i'm beginning to see that it's hard for a lot of people to just take this as a major win and move forward because rocksteady easily could have just like not done this right they could have not done this if this was the initial plan from the start and they decided to switch up two months out from well let me not say that they decided to switch up somewhere earlier down the line but they just announced it two months out from release that's because they saw how the community was responding to it or they predicted that this probably wouldn't go over well and they just went okay yeah let's go ahead and try to work in an offline mode of all the sensible things that the community has been asking for and when i say sensible i don't mean people asking them to spend back the clock on the game in order to work in more of the free flow combat style from the old games i'm talking about things in the nature of them adding in offline mode things that are you know actually doable that wouldn't require this game getting pushed back like another two to three years right and that also the offline mode it's most likely the most requested thing prior to the announcement that they actually put in the game and change now i'm gonna keep it a buck with all of you realistically this shouldn't be an issue with anybody and i mean anybody the fact that i saw this pop up on my feed is nuts the fact that this is a hot topic on reddit still is nuts but what's really crazy is that this has been happening during a major shift in reception for the game i'm out here like 
Like, it's crazy. I'm seeing people talking about, oh, I'm locked in for 2024. I didn't pre-order the game today. I couldn't even wait. Me and all my homies ready to kick Brandy X green and purple shiny metallic ass come January 30th. And it's like, I like it. <laughs> but I don't know. I genuinely don't know where any of this any of this praise is coming from but it's a great thing because more people means more eyes on the game which can definitely help down the road in the, in the long game right now in terms of the other issues that you know people are having right now just uh, just to address those very quickly like gameplay for example saying king shark shouldn't be using the gun boomer doesn't use his boomerangs 100 percent of the time yada 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 let me play a clip for you real quick yeah looking forward to killing the justice league and all but i well, you know, these guns are a bit shit. Oh, no offense. Then head northwest. That's the last known of a Gotham arms dealer who's dug into Metropolis. Oswald Cobblepot. Now, before any of y'all try to jump on my bumper and say that I pulled this from the NDA, no, y'all are wrong because that, I'm no, I'm not stupid enough to talk. I'm not stupid enough to talk about the NDA. That that clip right there came from the first Insider episode. So listen, listen to me. We are a bunch of merry misfit criminals going on a suicide mission to kill the strongest people on the planet, which includes a peak Amazon warrior, the fastest man alive, a space cop that can kill you with his imagination, a depressed adult with more money than he actually needs and an alien who's revered as a literal god to humans not only has logic jumped out the window at 90 miles an hour at this point but come on now they need something else to even the odds because even with all of the trick boomerangs that boomerang could probably come up with we are fighting the league that has no restrictions on killing they are playing for keeps so nothing is off limits here plus at the end of the day it doesn't matter if king shark has a minigun it doesn't matter if you know harley is just out here like sp sporting a whole 50 caliber rifle as long as they can make it fun it shouldn't matter these characters have guns is that an issue okay yeah i hear you but if they can make it fun it shouldn't be an issue right now the live service thing I've repeated this a million times. Let's actually play. And I mean, really play the game first before we start making critical judgments, because that right there is exactly how games end up not getting a fair shake. And like a year later, we start getting the perhaps we treated you too harshly tweets. And I say that because I've literally been seeing that from Midnight Suns. And y'all like if, if, and if my long time viewers know, y'all know how I was with Midnight Suns. I'm seeing all these tweets. You know what? It's crazy how Venom had a way better portrayal in this game than he did in Spider-Man 2. It's crazy how this game had a more fleshed out story. Like, where was all this at earlier this year? Goddamn Mandela effect. Now, the ending notes for this video, right? The recent discussion about offline mode is stupid and damn near every way possible. And it genuinely should not be an issue. It, it, if you have an issue with it, I might need you to sit back and reevaluate exactly what it is that's wrong. If you're someone who has other issues with the game, but you're not really certain about it, whether or not you don't want it, like you're on the fence, like it looks interesting, but you know, the game just on the fence, go ahead, pick it up and play it for yourself. All right. Because worst case scenario, if you don't like it, what you wasted seventy dollars that you could probably make back after a day at work. Don't let me or any other creator tell you what to do with your money because more often than not, people tend to miss out on fun experiences for themselves because a creator that they like went, "Oh, this game is dog water, complete and total waste of money. Don't buy, don't support this company. They hate this community. They da 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 da." And that narrative usually just sticks because of the admiration for that creator right just because that creator had a bad experience with the game doesn't mean that you're gonna have one you are your own person please form your own fair and based opinion after giving the game a fair shake regardless of what others think now with that being said it's gonna go ahead and that's gonna bring us to the end of the video hopefully y'all have had a great and decent time here let me know down in the comments below how you feel about the offline mode edition and if you think this whole argument that's currently going on right now is kind of dumb and again if you've enjoyed the video please let me know sorry not please let me know please go ahead and like share and subscribe and smack that notifications bell so that y'all can stay posted on any of my future suicide squad related videos and i will catch y'all in the moonlight peace